Hi, welcome to Beginning Engineers. Today, I'm going to be talking about work sampling. What is work sampling? Work sampling is taking a sample at random intervals to determine how workers are spending their time. It can be one worker, two workers, or many more. And it's key that the times you're taking these samples are random. Why random? Well, because work sampling is a sampling method. In order for it to be statistically significant, so for it to have value and be mostly correct, it needs to have an element of randomness to it. There is an equation that will help you determine the number of observations to have a statistically significant work sampling study. But to be honest, I never really used this equation. It's shown on the bottom right of the slide for your reference. So why work sample at all? Well, the time of the study is short, comprehensively. Even if you add together the entire time it took you to do the study, it's going to be way quicker than it would take for you to watch someone their entire work shift. And that's because you're doing statistical sampling. So if you sample truly randomly, it will give you an accurate representation of the whole. So I included a picture there of jelly beans. Imagine if you had a big bag full of jelly beans, four or five different colors, but you couldn't see what was in the bag. If you kept taking out little handfuls of jelly beans, maybe five to seven a handful, and writing down what they were, eventually, after enough samples, you would have an idea for what was in the bag. Hopefully this reminds you of learning about probabilities sometime in elementary school. The idea that you can take just a few handfuls of jelly beans multiple times out of a bag and discover what's in the entire bag, even though you're only looking at a small part of it. This idea holds true in the manufacturing world as well, or even the office world. You can just look at someone for 20 minutes and have an idea how they're spending their whole day. As long as those 20 minutes are split up and randomly taken. True sampling. Now that you know what work sampling is and why it is so beneficial, you might be wondering, how do you actually do it? Well, first of all, you need to have a target for what information is needed. What production cell or part of the office are you going to look at? What workers or operators are you going to look at? Then you will need to randomly generate the times which you'll be recording what is happening. So although time is involved, this isn't like a time study where you're starting the timer and ending it to see how long something takes. Rather, you're picking random times and recording what exactly is happening at that exact moment in time. Are they activating a machine? Are they moving when you look at them? It's useful to have a stopwatch so that you know when the random time is there, but only to record what is happening, the qualitative description of what is happening, not how long it is taking. From a practical standpoint, it is good to have the categories already written. That way you don't have to write down what's happening. Sometimes you're doing a very rapid work sample and you only have time to make a check. You see them walking, check it. You see them pressing a button, check it. Be aware of additional things outside the normal job. Maybe they're dropping parts. Maybe there's an awkward movement involved. These things are part of their day. A time study may not have discovered that the parts are taking long to produce because there's a part they keep dropping. But work sampling, if done right, you're going to notice they keep dropping a part. Your random sampling will find it. So you've done your study. How do you analyze the data and or present it? Well, I found that for work sampling, pie charts work really well for breaking down how someone spends their time, or how a group of people spend their time. So if you can't tell from the number of observations, when you put it into pie chart form, you might notice, wow, they're spending 5% of their day dropping parts. Or how come it takes them 3% of their day to walk to one machine, but 13% to walk to another? So a well-labeled pie chart will help you begin to discover discrepancies when you compare it to the operation standards or work instructions or time studies to see where things just don't line up. For example, the time study says you should get 10 parts out an hour, but in reality you're only getting 8 parts out an hour. Well, if you look at your work sample pie chart and see you're dropping parts 5 or 10% of your day, there's why. Or maybe your work instruction needs to include something about walking from one area to the next. Maybe you never even considered that when you wrote the work instruction. It's important to note with your pie chart and work sampling that you have to include things like breaks and fatigue. You can't expect people to work efficiently 100% of the time. People are people, not robots. So on that note, I'll end it on this. Always be nice.
Work sampling is extremely useful to do, but you have to be nice to people when you're studying them. Let people know that you are performing a study if you're standing around in their area, although occasionally management will have you hide or use cameras to study them. Also, on your side of things, make sure you record exactly what is happening when the preset time arrives. Sometimes people will be transitioning between two things and your own biases can get involved. For example, right when you press your stopwatch and look up and see someone talking to a coworker, they may have just been working, so technically, you should mark that they were working when the preset time came, but you might be tempted to write that they weren't working because you're biased against them. If they truly are not working very often, it will come up in your work sample, so try to avoid those biases. As always, thanks for watching this beginning engineer's video. I hope you understand the value of a work sampling study. You can take a small look at how someone is working or living their life and extrapolate it for a much bigger picture. It's the value of using statistical sampling. If you like this video, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.